for a little bit of a late start. I certainly want to thank everybody for taking some time out of their lovely day to um, spend some time with us uh, and talk a little more about View the Future and um, your input, uh, which we really appreciated to our um, community and stakeholder surveys that we sent out uh, as part of a uh, strategic planning process that we are undergoing. Uh, I'll introduce myself and then we'll go around the horn, so to speak, and have everybody say who they are and uh, a little bit about their background. Uh, my name is John Thylacker and I am co-chair of the board of directors of View the Future. Uh, I've been living in Yahats now for about three years, um, and I've been on the board of View the Future uh, roughly two years. Um, I um, have a background in uh, land conservation, uh, and so obviously when moving to um, Yahats in the Oregon coast, I was very, very excited about uh, the work that View the Future was was doing and had been doing for almost two decades. Um, and so I uh, decided to um, throw in my hat and offer some of my expertise um, to help out with uh, the future growth um, and accomplishments for View the Future. So um, I'll uh, turn it over to Joanne to introduce herself. I am Joanne Cattell, and um, I think uh, Jeff and Dave know me. Uh, I've been a Yahats resident full time for 30 years and have had my property for 36. Um, I've been involved with View the Future since practically its inception, 19 years. Um, I think I did say I'm, I'm co chair with uh, John, and um, we're in the middle of a strategic plan having the super, superlative and generosity of Deb Merchant, who is also here. Um, so I'll pass it on from there. Okay, Betty? Hi, I'm Betty Perman. Um, I've been on, uh, I'm a board member on View the Future and I help out on a web page and social media kind of stuff. And I've been a full-time resident in Yahats for 13 years now and had a vacation place probably almost 10 years beyond that. Uh, I'm a member of View the Future because I care deeply about our environment, our community, and um, I'm, I, like John mentioned, I've been so impressed with what View the Future has done in the past that it was an exciting opportunity to get involved with the future of it. So that's probably enough for me. Go to Sherry. Yeah. Hi, Sherry Dickinson here. Um, I've lived in Yahats 15 years, the majority of it full time. And I joined you, the future, because I am concerned about the future and I don't want to uh, leave this area in worse shape than I found it. And we're glad that she feels that way. It's absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Dean. Yes, Dean Peterson, uh, treasurer. Uh, yeah, I got a finance background. Back in the day, Yahats used to have a bank. And uh, and uh, I, that's where I was employed and uh, branch manager. And uh, that's how I got involved with View the Future. And uh, now that the bank is gone, still involved and, and still love it and glad to be a part of it. Thank you, Dean. Michael? Um, yeah, my name is um, Mike Hempen and uh, board members for seven years, lived in Yahats for eight years. Uh, love the idea of conserving <laughs> our land. Every time I look at the view shed over uh, on the south side of town, I'm reminded what view the future is all about. Um, not just protecting our view, but our watershed. And I can't think of a better place to uh, uh, volunteer and participate uh, other than view the future. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, so, and Deb, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi there, I'm Deb Merchant and I was born and raised in Oregon. 
have not lived in Yahats, but I was introduced to Yahats and view the future by a very dear friend of mine who lived there for many years. And I got to know Joanne <clears throat> through that special friend. And at the bridge ceremony last year, we connected a little more closely. And so I've been doing some work for View the Future and its strategic planning that we hope to complete in another four to six weeks. And needless to say, the survey that you completed and your participation today is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Deb. And Liz, Liz, you're on mute. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Liz. Can you hear us? She's not pictured, but she's here. Liz. Okay. Yeah. We'll try to get back to her later. Uh, oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm not, I, I'm actually a little bit sick, but I wanted to call in and just listen. I'm, um, my name is Liz Bird. I'm a new member. I just joined, um, a few months ago. I'm also passionate about conserving the environment. I've lived in Yahats for about five years and I'm very excited about this, the opportunity to work with View the Future. Great. Thank you, Liz. We hope you're feeling better soon. Yeah. So um, can we have, inter can we hear from our, I believe two, um, Members, either Jeff or Dave, is it? Do you want to introduce yourselves? Introduce yourselves. Uh, yeah. This is Dave, uh, first yeah. moved out to the Oregon. I'll actually try and start the video if it'll allow me to, but. Uh... First moved out to the Oregon. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Okay, uh, I'm hearing myself in the background then. Uh, Dave oh, Powell okay. uh, moved out to the Oregon I'm coast with start of. Of Jeff, December uh, 2015. Turn your speaker off. Uh, okay. I'm not sure that I am on speaker. No, no, no. No, Dave, you go ahead. I think it was Jeff that we had. Oh. Okay. Uh, moved out in December of 15. I actually first connected with Yahats with the uh, walking group, uh, the Coastal Gems, and then uh, ran into VTF uh, doing some trail work and been there doing that since uh, probably mid 2016. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeffrey. All right. Well, I'm Jeff Bowles. Uh, uh, I'm actually, well, I guess I'm a little bit different. I live in Walport. I have for the past, what, eight and a half years. Uh, my grandparents moved to Walport back in late 70s, and uh, so not a stranger to the area, uh, but I work at Angel Job Corps, and I'm kind of affiliated with View the Future through Joanne and some of the projects that uh, Angel Job Corps has, uh, has done on behalf of the organization. So I'm here just to, uh, to listen, to see what support uh, Angel's able, able to provide, um, I'm actually in a new role now, so I'm not really not affiliated with the trades anymore, more on the administrative side of the house, but, uh, you know, more than happy to see what I can do to help coordinate uh, different projects that the organization may need. Uh, Jeff, what is your role administratively now with the Job Corps? Yep, you're frozen. Okay, there you go. It was kind of free a little. So, so say that one again. Oh, uh, what is your administrative role now with the Job Corps? What is your administrative role now with the Job Corps? Right now, I am the administrative officer. So I manage uh, the center's budget, uh, student travel, uh, student pay. Um, completely different than what I was doing before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I know both Dave, Jeff right. and me. Well, yeah, I, 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 I know both Dave, Jeff and me. Um, and uh, I've worked with Jeff for most of us 20 years. Um, and uh, I've worked with Jeff for <laughs> most of us 20 years. 
And with uh, Dave, uh, we've been uh, partners and with, uh, for a long Dave, time. Uh, we've been uh, partners and for a long time. Jeff, we yes. seem to be getting, I don't know, we're getting an echo, I think, Jeff. On Jeff, your, we seem to be getting, I don't know, we're getting an echo, I think. Or whatever. Yeah, there you go. That works. Okay. Yeah. Much better. Hopefully you can still hear us and still and still talk as well. But um, we thank you both. Um, just so you know, we have a total of um, 13 board members. Um, we are all volunteer, no staff. Um, the uh, other board members in, that aren't here today include um, Jock Doss, uh, Michael Guerrero, um, Sam Hillman, Jesse Dolan, you heard from Liz, um, Way Radomski, um, and Catherine Gunther, who's on uh, temporary leave. Um, but um, we have a very active group of volunteers. Um, we, um, well, I guess I should say, fortunately, um, many of us are retired. Uh, and so we're able to spend a bit more time perhaps than some of our younger board members uh, in terms of um, handling the day-to-day -day operations that are required to continue uh, the success of our land trust. Um, well, certainly, uh, Joanne has spent a lot of time um, in terms of um, handling our day-to-day -day operations, our education and outreach, our relations with um, two coastal tribes, um, so uh, a lot going on uh, in terms of uh, our activity. Um, I don't know, Joanne, you wanna talk a little bit about um, our uh, sort of current focus in terms of um, a potential land acquisition? Well, we are um, actually view the future historically it was created by Andrea Sharp for one purpose, and that was to acquire a large piece of property um, uh, that bordered the southwest um, side of Yahats, south, just south of the river. And um, uh, that's been an ongoing process. The primary delay has been that it kept changing owners. In fact, since I've lived here, there's been 10 owners of that property. And so we've never given up on that. And uh, we've recently partnered with Mackenzie River Trust, and we're still going at it to, to uh, both uh, find a way to buy it and find a takeout owner. So I would say that's our biggest uh, project right now. But at the same time, we um, are always uh, soliciting um, for uh, with uh, private landowners if they would be interested in doing conservation easements. We have five such conservation easements right now. And those are, if you don't know what conservation easements are, they are um, where a private landowner voluntarily puts part or all of his property in some type of preservation. Um, it can be um, along or a part of it along the river. It can be to still uh, do forest management and forest cutting, but not clear cutting, select cutting. Uh, and um, other forms of uh, conservation and preservation for their property. And such agreements that they make are uh, legal agreements that are filed with their um, uh, clerk's office, goes with their deed, and it's in perpetuity. And View the Future's role is to help educate them about it, help them go through the process of, uh, of creating one, and then we become the holders of that easement. In other words, we're the enforcers of it. And, um, and a number of land conservation uh, organizations do so exactly that. And uh, we have uh, my properties in one. Uh, we have the Bryan property that's on the north side of the 804 trail. We have the entire Grimman Botanical Preserve, which includes a public trail. We have um, uh, a piece of property that is allowing a public bridge to go across it, part of the Star Creek uh, trail system. And we have a property up the Ahats River Road. Theirs is a very limited easement, but a very important one in which they don't allow a private third party to build a road through uh, to log an important piece of uh, property 
that is preserving um, part of uh, the Ahats watershed. So uh, those are, and we're always interested in educating people more about that. As you know, Jeff, uh, and you know, Dave, uh, we also help fund uh, recreational uh, trails. And uh, Jaw Court's always been a very important part of that from the very beginning of the Amanda Trail in 1996, when they um, created the federal side of Amanda. Uh, they continue to help both the city of Yahats and Yahats Trails um, crew and um, through the urban forestry department. And they've also, their carpentry department has built a fence on the Prospect Trail. It's been a wonderful, warm, warm partnership. Also a lot of fun too. Uh, we, we just couldn't get along without Job Corps. And, mm -hmm. um, and then um, mm. uh, Dave has always been working on the trails with us or pulling in bases. And so we, um, we partnered usually with the city of Yahas, but we have partnered with state parks, federal forest service in terms of trail capital projects. We write the grants, get the donations, and we're, you know, we're soliciting donations for a boardwalk in Yahats, which is part of the Oregon Coast Trail. Yep, thank you, Joanne. That's a, yep. excellent. Um, I guess Jeff or Dave, obviously, um, you know, we're interested either in questions that you have of us, or um, if you wanted to expand upon any recommendations that you provided as part of responding to the survey or from anything that you've heard here, uh, if anything that you wanted to um, share with us, um, you know, we can, have, we can have some good dialogue on that. So I'll invite either of you to. Okay, here's Jeff. Yeah. Um, well, Dave here. Uh... One of my main things has been uh, the Oregon Coast Trail. Uh, almost have the entire thing, uh, Garmin marked, distances measured and things like that. Um, so having that safe walkway there on uh, whatever street that is first or whatever, um, you know, is a continuation of that uh, right. for me. And um since I also work with uh, Trail Keepers of Oregon, uh, I know that it was maybe four years ago, maybe five, uh, that we went through the one day working with the uh, Sayusla people and all of us ended up with those nice um, Sasquatch shirts uh, for working that day. And I uh, was curious if we were gonna ever be uh, working with uh, Sayusla again on perhaps uh, the trails. Uh, Amanda, to start with perhaps maybe some of the other trails. Yeah. yeah, I got one of those Sasquatch t-shirts too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, uh, in fact, Trails is, um, uh, Bob Langley with Trails has uh, connected with the executive director of TKO uh, just at a training last week or two weeks ago and talking about doing some conjoint projects. Yeah, I was gonna say last I heard was we're supposed to get a new, uh, Central Coast Coordinator, I think it's June 1st. Yes. So. For Cyrus on National Forest, is that what, or for TKO? TKO. That's for TKO. Okay, okay. About a okay. week and a half ago, we got a brand new person for the North, North Coast. So oh, wow. hopefully we'll have three coordinators covering the coast this year. Okay, Great. okay. Cool, okay. And so you do extend Central Oregon. Okay, so I'm t Dave, I guess if I could ask you a question in, in, I don't think it's off topic, but it's certainly within our region. So um, do you know why the China Beach Loop Trail has been closed for so long? Um, just curious if you're aware of that from- uh, Actually, I was down the China Loop. I was down the uh, China Beach uh, for the Oregon Coast Trail last fall, right, and got it pretty well Garmin marked. Uh, so I'm guessing if it's closed right now, it's probably because trees down. There's some trees that have closed a couple of the trails up in the northern part. Um, trying to remember whether it's uh, Cape Lookout or uh, I, I know that they lost the bridge there at Oswald West, at Nikani uh, Creek, uh, and I know that there's I 
think it's in Ecola. They have one of the trails down because of trees also. So okay. it's that time of year until they get those trees cut out, the trails are closed. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah actually, I think the China Creek is closed because the bridge is out. There's a bridge. There's a one part of the trail is still open, but the there's a bridge that crosses the creek, and it's it's sort of sinking oh, down. Oh. Water. Oh, you're talking China Creek down there at um, Car down, Washburn. Down, down, Car Washburn. down at Washburn. Oh, yes. okay. I'm thinking China Creek all the way down to Samuel Boardman. No, no, no. <laughs> not that far <laughs> south, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You know, I've done trail with TKO all the way from E. Cola all the way down through Samuel Boardman. So right. Uh, right. I was doing work down there at uh, Samuel Boardman around uh, China Creek down there last fall, back in September and October. So okay. Um, I'm not sure why China Creek is closed. Uh, I was hoping to perhaps maybe get down through that area sometime in about the next two or three weeks. Okay. It's well, and I don't mean to belabor, and Liz, I, I sort of thought the same thing, that there was a bridge out um, that was keeping that loop closed. I, although... I've been down there and it, it is, I mean, it's, it, it looks like you could, sink into the river um i mean you could maybe get across but obviously they don't want people to try right so, yeah. yeah right well Excuse once me, it dries liz. out the uh, river will be lower so it'd be easier yeah, yeah. Uh, liz yeah. is it the fiberglass bridge um i don't know what it's made of but it's it's sort of like a temporary bridge it doesn't have it doesn't have um arches on each side it's sort of i don't know it kind of looks like a temp i don't know what it's made of but it's sort mm -hmm. of Sinking down on one side and um, doesn't okay. look like it needs to be fixed for sure. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to belabor that, but I was just <laughs> curious. And it was actually something that I didn't know whether, you know, at some point in the future, whether you, the future, might have some opportunity to help state parks if they're low on staff or low on resources that, you know, we or you know, a crew from, you know, Yahats City Trails or whatever might be able to help. But, you know, Dave, obviously that's, that's something that your group, you know, specifically focuses on, so. Yeah, I was gonna say up at Cascade had that uh, little footbridge over uh, the little creek there to go to Hart's Cove has been down for years. Um, but then again, they we finally opened that Northern part of the trail over uh, Highway 101. Uh, about three years ago. So, I mean, trails go down and uh, we, we we try to rebuild them back up. Right, right. Well, so, uh, go ahead. Jeff just uh, left some notes here that they're still trying to hire your replacement, Jeff. Um, and um, that's really good to know. And that, um, yeah, I can understand that after being closed for so long, uh, a lot of your trades are booked up for a year or more on projects. And um, and sometimes those projects can be squeezed in. So we'll keep that in mind. And also I'll convey that to the Yahats trail leaders as well. Um, but that's one thing for View the Future to keep in mind because um, with possible conservation easements and acquisitions um, that uh, if we need help from uh, Angel, like the Scott lot, for example, I'm thinking of, um, we will then have to maybe schedule that a year in advance and uh, see if it's an appropriate project for um, uh, the Job Corps Urban Forestry Program. So thank you, Jeff, for that information. Great idea. Yep. Great idea. Great idea. Yep. Great idea. Absolutely. I'm just <laughs> trying to minimize the feedback, and I figured I'd just type. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, one, one other thing that I, I do need to mention that's Thank very you. important <laughs> is when it comes to projects with Angel Job Corps, we are not allowed to do any work on private property. It has to be government or nonprofit. Yes. So I wanted to mention that, that that's a very important thing. So if, yes. you know, if they if work is required on private property, we have to respectfully decline because that would violate uh, the rules that we are governed by. Right. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't right. something I was aware. Of. Right. 
Yeah, that's um, very, very important. So the job corps can work on my property because of the irrevocable easement. And so uh, state parks owns that, so that's legitimate, but they can't work on other parts of my property unless I hire the students on weekends. So they could not, even if we held the easement, they could not do sort of easement work for our nonprofit as long as it was on private property. For our nonprofit as long as it was on privately property. That's correct. It would have to be in the name of a government agency or the nonprofit agency for us to be able to do work. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, so they can't work on, um, uh, let's see, gosh. Um, well, they couldn't work on the sidewalk. They can't work on the, uh, except on the public trail. They can work on right. the public trail, but not outside of that. Um, but they can work on the Bryan property because the county owns it. Mm -hmm. uh, they can work on the Scott lot because as a nonprofit, we own it. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, so it's, it, so even if you have an easement on private property, they can't work on that private property. They can't property. work on that private property. Right. Gotcha. That's I'm glad you brought that up, Jeff. That's good information yeah. for us. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I ask yeah. a question of each of our guests? Oh, Please. sure. Okay. So, Jeff, I'll have you keep yours on mute until uh you're ready maybe dave we'll start with you but essentially the same question in the framework of a strategic plan one of the most important elements is to better understand how the organization can be of value to the community that's in and of itself the purpose of a nonprofit entity it's a community value and so my question for each of you and dave will start with you first if we can if an individual in town were to walk up to you and say, hey, I've heard about this group, View the Future, what do you know about that organization? What would you tell that individual? I would tell them that they were very involved in making sure that people were able to use the trails in the city of Yohats. That they also are involved in a few projects uh, that have made it uh, safer and will continue to do some projects that will make it uh, safer for people to go walking on the trails uh, in the future, like that project there on First Street. Um, and also that they are involved in making sure that uh, some of the properties uh, stay open so that it will be available for the general public uh, and not be closed off for private use. That would be my three main points. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything, Dave, that you think View the Future could do better or expand on? In other words, what kind of gaps are there that need filled within the community? And that also, given View the Future's mission, is there a role for the organization there? You know, as I go walking back towards the uh, Gurdman Gardens, there's a bunch of wooded land up to the uh, east of it. Uh, you know, uh, trails could go running up into there, assuming that it was uh, public land or easements were uh, there to go ahead and to increase um, the trails back into that area. And I would think that perhaps maybe even on not not on uh, Joanne's property, but back there in the uh, parks area, that uh, even the Amanda Trail could perhaps get uh, expanded back with a couple more spurs back in there so that people would have more trails to go walking on. Great, thank you. Yeah, like that. So Jeff, I'll call on you for the same thing. If you can tell us what you might uh, convey to others. Uh, that don't already know about View the Future. What kind of community uh, value that don't does the already know provide? about View the Future? What kind of community value does the organization provide? I would have to say that the most valuable part of it is the partnership aspect. You know, View the Future is in the business of conservation and being able to provide public recreation. 
whereas Angel is in the business of student training, but also in conservation. And so the partnership that we can develop together to boost both organizations, I, th I think is extremely valuable. You know, we're trying to help these young people uh, gain values in employability, uh, life skills, to get, uh, to get careers and jobs so that they're productive members of society. So being able to have this partnership, we're, we're creating a better future, not just for our community, but for, well, what spans beyond our community. Mm -hmm. And what would you say about how VTF can potentially do a better job or fill some gaps that the community currently has? Advertise more. Get the word out of what View the Future is really about. Um, I mean, jo Joanne, Joanne knows this quite well as far as, you know, Angels Community Relations Council. Uh, Angel is trying to get the word out as to what we are, what we do, um, you know, spread the word on that. But I, I think the same could be said about View the Future. Get the word out to the community. Um, you know, I, I find it interesting that all we have in this meeting, for the most part, is folks from Yahats. We need to expand more. We need folks mm. from Yahats. What about folks from Newport, Florence? Expand out to other communities. Toledo. I mean, recreation is is for everybody, not just a specific town. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. perhaps a little advertising may, may assist. And, uh, you know, Joanne, you know, Max is really good about that. Yeah. It may be something that, uh, he'd be willing to, to jump on to yeah. assist. Uh, thank you. That's, that's a good point. That's a real great point. Thank you. Uh, thank yes. you. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and perhaps, Jeff, this is Dave. Uh, I am from Newport on the north side of Communication Hill, so uh, it at least reached me. But like I said, the reason I found out about BTF was first the walking club there at Yahat, the uh, Coastal Gems. That's when I first ran across the Amanda Trail and the uh, other little uh, trails there in the community. Yep. Yep. Definitely good to know that. I mean, my, my interaction yeah. with, uh, you know, View the Future is with Joanne and the Amanda Trail. Uh, other than that, I really, I have never seen any advertising or anything other about it. Uh, it's just strictly what, what I know internally. That's interesting. Yep. Very well, helpful. I'll do another article for the uh, Oregon Coast today, probably on my Dave's detours off the Oregon Coast Trail again, so. I try, I try a little bit. And I'm just curious, one last question for each of you. How did you find out about the surveys and what prompted you to participate? Dave? Um, well, I got noticed because of the fact that I'm there on probably maybe a dozen to 15 of the VT, uh, of the, uh, trail and or the invasive plant work days. So it showed up in my email. Great, how about you, Jeff? How did you learn about it, the survey? Oh, uh, actually I was uh, sent an invite for the survey and knowing that View the Future is connected with the Amanda Trail, I thought it was uh, well worth completing and and seeing what I can do to assist. And, and if I if I can just put in an extra plug, uh, as far as the advertising part, has anyone considered radio advertising? I, I listen to a, a local country station every day that advertises for the coastal community, mm -hmm. and I believe it's free. 
So it's a thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what the the number is or the uh, letters are for that Western uh, radio station, Jeff? I want to say it's like ninety seven point three. Um, I don't ninety six point three or something like that. It, it's it, it's ninety something, but I know that they deal with uh, advertisement along the coast. Okay. I, I can't recall the actual station number, but I've got my radio set to it, and that's what I listen to every morning. <laughs> no, yeah, so, no, it's it's a thought. No, no, that's good. Uh, FM. Oh, yeah. Yeah, FM. Yeah. yeah. I would assume it'd be FM. FM. Yes, yeah, FM. I would assume it'd be FM. Yeah. Dave, I have a question and and, for you. And, and I might say that uh, you might be able to go ahead and get on the community calendar and have it broadcast for our work days on uh, KYAK. KYAQ, the independent one. Was in Toledo, it's now moved into Newport. KYAQ. Okay. Uh, Bill Dolby. Okay. Dave, I have a question for you. Um, you know, sort of thinking long term. Um, you know, as the Oregon Coast Trail, um, you know, the gaps continue to be filled in with the Oregon Coast Trail, and I assume as it increases in popularity. Um, amongst hikers from all over. I mean, what, what could View the Future do, um, you know, to sort of prepare for that or to take advantage of that trail or, um, you know, to help make it a success, I guess. I mean, do you have any thoughts in that regard in terms of what we should be thinking about long-term? Uh, number one, uh, at the rate that the state is going, the Oregon Coast Trail will never be finished. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm, the Oregon Coast you. Trail started the same as the Buckeye Trail in Ohio, which was supposed to go from Lake Erie uh, down to the Ohio River and roughly run 300 miles. Uh, it ended up becoming a loop just inside the border of Ohio, which made it about 1,200 miles. They finished... And I'm going to say that they were pretty well finished within about 15 years. Of course, they kept adding in sections where they took off a uh, section of road because there was a back trail that they used. Uh, officially, they 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 uh, finished 35 years ago. And a large port of the uh, uh, Buckeye Trail, especially from the um, Middle Eastern all the way around to the Western, is considered part of the Great Northern Trail now. Uh, it has been set, it has been fixed, it has been there for decades. Um, there is pieces of the Oregon Coast Trail that I'm pretty sure that the uh, Oregon Parks and Recreation don't even remember that they had. I go walking on sections of trail where there are Oregon Coast Trail posts, there are wooden bridges, uh, foot bridges that they put in uh, that are not even on the trail anymore. And considering the fact that the uh, southern part of the state, especially around Arizona Beach, is sliding and they may move Highway 101 in uh, off of the uh, uh, the ocean, uh, uh, who knows what's going to happen with the Oregon Coast Trail down there. So uh, at this point, I'm pretty well fixed that uh, it'll never be finished in my lifetime, even if I live another 20 years. As far as the numbers of people on it, there are there you you can count on your fingers and toes the number of people who actually do it the uh, the entire trail in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it is done on day hikes, like in um, Connie Soper's book. It's day hikes to do sections. She hasn't done her books uh, has not uh, revised it since 2015. I'm not sure if she'll ever revise it. Um, but, uh, don't expect huge crowds of people. Uh, it'll just be a here, a straggler, there, a straggler, uh, you know, maybe two or three people hiking together, together as a group, but 
it's not going to be big numbers unless things radically change. Okay. Good to know. I appreciate that. And, 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 and as a hiker, I find that highly discouraging, especially because the uh, Pacific Crest Trail uh, is, is, is so fire damaged almost every year anymore. Uh, this should have been done decades ago. Uh, they should have bought out some land so that some of those gaps didn't exist. But uh, they they keep fooling around with it. And uh, like I said, I don't think it'll ever get done. Okay. Well, thank you. I figured yeah. you, you'd know as well as anybody. So appreciate that. Yeah, well, when you see a person hiking along Highway 101 in Samuel Boardman because he fell down, uh, because they actively rooted him into an active landslide, um on the state map and they hadn't corrected it even if you would checked that sam boardman that that section of trail was closed i mean that tells you um that's not yeah. anywhere in the state's priority i'm right. sorry yeah yeah and yeah. this was a guy who had done appalachian trail twice and uh pacific crest once Good green. and he's walking highway 101 <laughs> Hmm. All right. Well, anything else that either of you wish to add? We don't want to keep you any longer than you're willing to be. Well, my cert meeting's about ready. My cert meeting's about ready to start, so I'll go ahead and say goodbye. And uh, like I said, uh, keep up the good work. Like I said, uh, more trails. Uh, We've been doing work to make sure that the trails are safer, make sure that that uh, section along uh, that first street or whatever that is right there next to the river uh, to make yeah. it safer for pedestrians. And uh, I'll be happy as a clam to be down there as uh, many first and third Saturdays as possible. So take care, y'all. Appreciate All right. you. Thank Dave. you. And bye. Thanks, Thanks so Dave. Thanks, Thank Dave. you, yeah. Dave. <clears throat> and Jeff, yes, we are talking about, we have to get the word out in different ways than what, what we have had. Uh, certainly radio is an option. Um, some time ago, like with the peace hikes and uh, uh, when we used to do National Trails Day and get involved in that, we would go on the radio. But we haven't gone on the radio for, gosh, even before COVID. I mean, mm -hmm. um, and that's something we could get back to. I think we'd always be welcome in Newport. Uh, you talked about advertising, Jeff, um, on the radio. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a really good point. You know, we could have been on the radio for the dedication. We just didn't think about that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, yeah. So great thanks. suggestion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I immediately thought about a young man who's in my world, a recent OSU master graduate soil scientist, and he's now <clears throat> engaged with, uh, I think, Douglas County SWCD. And in the process of promoting a particular event <clears throat> that's coming up in May, he was interviewed by the local radio station, but it was also recorded on Zoom. And so Scott and I were able to watch and listen. And of course, other people who were listening to the radio got to hear all about it. But he provided about a 15 or 20 minute interview. And it was just fascinating what we learned about soil and its importance to our day-to-day -day lives, not just trees and plants and food, but we actually got a real live education from this young guy in pretty short order. And it was very fun to watch and listen to him during that radio experience. He had a great time. So that's a great suggestion, Jeff. Good. Excellent. Well, Jeff, anything more to add or any final questions? Otherwise, we'll we can let you go. Otherwise, we'll we can let you go. I would say just continue doing the great work that you guys are doing. And uh, one of these days, I will actually go on the Amanda Trail and hike the whole thing. Oh, I'm looking forward it's to it. It's on you my bucket list. I will yeah. do that. Oh, I'm looking, looking forward to you. You could always you could always start at the top and work your way down. That's a little easier. You could always, you could always start at the top and work your way down. That's a little easier. <laughs>
No, no, I'll, I'll take it the hard way. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it from start to finish, but I will do it the hard way. Uh, yeah, I've got to do it. I've right. got to do it. So, Wonderful. That's excellent. But just, just keep All doing right. the great work that you guys are doing Wonderful. and know that it's, it's appreciated by the community. Uh, it's appreciated by our tourists. It's important work and needs to continue. Thank you. Well, thank you for your support. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, thank you. And I, I'll see you at the advisory board meeting very soon. Absolutely, looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have All a right. good night. Bye. 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 Thank you, Deb. <laughs>